Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to start seeds. And we're going to go through the process of how to make your seedlings nice and strong before you transplant it into your hydroponic systems or anywhere else that you're planning to grow. And I've never done a video on this uh, separately. I've, it's, always, it's always been part of a long video of the entire grow process. But surprisingly, so many people are interested and ask how is it that you can make the plants nice and strong without it being so stretchy? So today we're going to go through the whole process and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. That way you can do it on your own. So as always on my channel, I like to use the most simplistic things. Uh, or just anything that you can find around the house that are really, really cheap. Um, you don't have to buy a bunch of stuff that are too expensive for testing purposes. So here I have a ketchup container. Um, you can get a lid if you like. A lid is nice because it 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 will help you. It will help the 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 rock will retain moisture. That way you don't have to water too often. And the only thing you need to buy for starting seeds uh, is just a rock wool cube, and you can get this online. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use just plain water I just fill this with plain water nothing special just right out of my faucet and what we're gonna do here is we're going to allow the rock wool to soak up as much water as possible or it can hold and I don't I don't really pH balance the water for starting seeds uh, but some people suggest that's a good idea I never do it and it works just fine so just allow the rock wool to soak up all of the water that it can hold and then let the excess drain out you don't you don't need to shake it so I'm gonna pour this out okay and that is it so that is how you soak your seeds I mean your rock wool um, to get it ready okay the next thing we're going to do is add our seeds so I'm testing around with my tass soy uh, I have a few projects going on so uh, I'm going to start a few a few more seeds and you always want more than one seed in those pockets just so you have something that will sprout instead of wasting your time so I suggest three or four seeds and so I have four seeds here and what we're going to do is just drop that in there we'll thin them out later and you don't have to close it if you don't want to just leave it like that and then what we're gonna do is put this right on top to keep the moisture in that way you don't have to water again until uh, the seedlings start to sprout out so let's go ahead and put this next to our light so that uh, it can grow nice and strong okay so here comes the most important part you want your lights to be very strong or I mean not very strong but strong enough for your seedling to grow nice and 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 sturdy down here so you don't, you want it as as low as possible to a point where it does not burn the seedling so CFL can be very hot so when you lower it it could cause some burn to the leaf so just gauge and judge how hot it is and then put it about uh, 6 to 12 inches above but uh, here I'm using my LED lights from the arrow garden and as you can see you can put it very very low and it will not burn the lights because it's very very cool type of lights so I put it around maybe six inches above and then there's some plants already started and you see it's, it looks really happy so we'll come back in a few days it should it should sprout in about three to four days if you have fresh new seeds like I always use seeds from my previous season and it grows like in three days so these here are probably three or four days old but um, we'll come back when this one's ready and I'll show you. All right, guys, it has been two days and the seeds have sprouted. Look at that. So this is the reason why it's such a good idea to use fresh seeds that you harvest recently. That way you get the sprout to come out very, very fast. And I started another one at the same time to show you the difference. What I'm going to do is put this under really good lights the proper way and then for the other one 
I'm going to put it outside the arrow garden, the improper way where it doesn't get enough light. So you can see the difference in how the plants react or how they grow. And also, if you see that the cubes are a little dry, you can tell by the color. If it's wet, you can see that it's darker. And if it's, if it's dried up, you can see that the top is lighter. So give it more water and allow the water to drain out of here and that's when you know it's enough. So don't let the plants dry out, that's the very important. So we will come back soon and then I will show you the difference as they grow a little bit more. Okay, today is day number three and we're going to have to start pruning because there's a ton of them right here that are, that are coming out. And this is the best time to do it because if you wait and then the roots get all tangled up, it's going to be very difficult to do. And at day number three, you can already notice the difference between the properly grown one under lights and one that is not properly grown. So check this out. You see how tall that is? So improper lighting will cause the plants to reach like this, not compact and nice like we want. Proper lightings will make them grow like nice like this. So you need to prune. We only need to leave one. Now, if you're careful, you can actually pull this out and then grow it somewhere else. So, um, but I'm not going to need to grow this anywhere else because I have so many already. So I'm just going to pluck this out. You see? You can actually grow this because the roots are still intact and nice looking. So this will grow in another hydroponic system if you just put it into a rock wool or you can put it in soil, whatever you like. So we'll do one more. Be careful just because you only need to pull one out. See there? So that is what you have left, just one. And we'll go ahead and prune the improper one as well. We'll just leave that one there, but there it is. You see how reaching that is? So we'll come back soon and then um, I'll show you what to do next. But in the meantime, make sure you check your cube and if it's dry, put more water in. When I pour water in, usually what this is what I'll do. And at this stage, you can actually use half strength nutrients if you like. So I use a medicine dropper and I just drop And that is how I water my plant. Okay, we'll just put it back. We'll leave this guy here. And we'll put this one back over there. So we'll come back soon. Once there's more progress and I'll show you what to do next. Alright guys, welcome back. Today is day number six. And let me show you what's going on. Here is the properly grown under lights, which is uh, the plants is getting enough light. So it's growing very, very nice and compact. So this is exactly what we want. So let me show you the one that is improperly grown. Look at this. There is a huge difference. You see how much uh, growth there is on this one, but this is not the type of growth that we want because the plant is actually very weak at the stalk. And if you grow this plant in your hydroponic system without the proper lighting, it will continue to grow tall and become top heavy and then fall over and die. So. Uh, proper lighting is very important when you're starting seeds and as you can see there is a huge difference so this is the type that you would like to grow because it's nice and strong and short and compact this is the one you can tell that is missing uh, the ingredient of light so this is what you don't want so there you have it guys that is the difference between growing under proper lighting and improper lighting so I hope you guys uh, got some information out of this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it below. And thank you so much for watching.